All right, welcome everyone on this first advanced tutorial for OBS where today we'll be looking at mainly the OBS settings and also at some Twitch settings to get you guys working with that. So let me get the monitor capture up so you can also see the OBS right here. The first thing that we're going to look at are the settings. So here we have the settings. Um, encoding is going to be one of the key things to use in the Twitch uh, settings it is advised to use uh, CBR and enable CBR padding um, I also use a custom buffer size and a different bitrate uh, how you should use that bitrate is outlined on the page right here so uh, for depending the quality you pick a different set of buffer size so for me as we saw that is 3000 which is for about 1080p which is fine but I think for most users you'll be looking at a bit rate of 1800 uh, to 2500 as this is also the upload speed that will be needed so the MBs per second of upload that your PC must have uh, yeah the audio encoding I just wouldn't change anything on that so you can't mess up any settings either moving on uh, broadcast settings uh, pretty much just leave them as it is you can add a delay here though if you wish to do that then for video I would just use a resolution that suits you I just use the resolution of my monitor um, could be confusing uh, that I have such a weird resolution but just pick a nice resolution uh, mainly for the viewers because that's what you want a resolution downscale you can use that but not need it at least I wouldn't use it and for FPS I use 45 because that makes the stream look a little bit better uh, but for most beginning streamers you would like to use 30 FPS or like 35 FPS because with 30 FPS if your FPS gets a little bit choppy while streaming it will drop below 30 and then it starts to look really weird but if you have 35 it gets a little bit choppy it will still stay around the 30 range so that's a good thing to do uh, disable arrow never touch that and audio, uh, it's basically what you want to do. You can add a delay to push to talk so you can't hear uh, it when you press the button, which is really good, which is what I use as well. Hotkeys, uh, push to talk hotkey, because I use that like that. And the advanced settings, uh, well, you can just see mine, but I wouldn't, wouldn't click too many of that. I'll just leave that alone, which is uh, the safest thing to do. And I think we went through all the things because I have some stuff here, which is extra uh, plugins that I enabled so this is nothing you have to look at so those are the settings mainly um, let's actually take the icon as an example to edit so we're gonna click edit scene oh, I can actually do that with this one as well so for mon monitor capture but most people know if you just you could just drag and change the size what you can also do is when you hold shift you, the, it doesn't matter what resolution you have, so you can do whatever you want with it. If you press, uh, let's see, I think that was Alt. If you press that, see, you can crop. So if you want to cut pieces, you can hold the Alt button and then uh, just make it however you want it. So that's a really nice thing that you can do with OBS hotkeys. Uh, for more for switching scenes, you can also add a hotkey yourself so ju to just swap it. So uh, let's say you want to like use a numpad. I usually use the numpad like the slash, the star, the minus and the plus because you don't really use them in AVA. So you can use them to change up to four scenes which especially when I'm streaming ESL is absolutely ideal. But if I'm streaming my regular event I also always have three scenes. I have lobby one. I have an in-game one and I have like a default scene for if, if something goes wrong or if I need to put my stream on, on hold or something like that, I have a scene for that as well. Um, yeah, those are the main things that you should know about OBS. So the second thing we're going to look at are some settings on Twitch. This is mainly going to be for hosting. So if you go to, the, to your Twitch channel... Uh, you go to your profile and you go to settings and then you click on channel and videos I apologize for this being Dutch, but that doesn't matter too much um, Anyways, the first thing you have is channel design 
what you want to do here, uh, you can put an offline banner here. So you can pick a picture. It says your aspect ratio has to be 16 to 9. So, so make sure that it's full screen. And you can just add a picture there. So you have a banner when you're offline. So you can lure your viewers back. Uh, mature content. Um, yeah, I don't really use it myself. But you can do that. It's up to you. Um, archive your broadcast. Always put that on. This means that your broadcast will be saved uh, up to 14 days if you're partnered even for 30 days or even more, uh, which means that you can make highlights out of it and eventually save them as permanent highlights or upload them to YouTube uh, to say. They have a, a stream delay that you have less delay. You could use that. Uh, I'm not really using that though because... Uh, People who have like a bad connection, as they say here, they will have they'll have more buffering, and that's not good for them, of course. And you can also add authorized users here if you want like people to stream on your channel. Um, to move on, this for the activity feeds, uh, delete links in chat, which I like to use. Uh, some chat rules that you can do ban people. You shouldn't see that though. This one, this is important. Automatic hosting. Uh, now there is a default Twitch command which is slash host and then you type a player's name so you can host a player on Twitch but you can also do automatic hosting. If you turn that on, you have like a host list here. You just uh, add some people that you want to host. I have uh, two of my friends and I have the people who are uh, approved content creators. I have those in and I choose for host priority to choose that to do that randomly. So if anyone of this list is going to be streaming, it will randomly start, uh, it will randomly pick one and will start hosting them, which means that more people will get to these channels and it's always good to support your friends. So that is going to be the first tutorial, the advanced tutorial for OBS, in which we covered OBS settings and Twitch. And in the next tutorials, we'll be looking at more things. We have a couple of uh, episodes coming up, which will include how to work with bots, how to set up... Um... I forgot. How to set up the, um, the follower notes and much more. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you with the next episode.